Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So today I'm going to talk about a topic that would interest teachers the most because I'm looking at this topic now from the perspective of an educator or a teacher, okay? Not the student, but it's very important that uh, a student also knows this perspective. So if you're a student or a teacher, this applies to you both. Uh, however, it is directed first at teachers. So if you do a search for Euclidean algorithm to find GCD, this is probably the first video with the highest number of views, okay? It's by Learn Math Tutorials. So if you uh, go through this video, once you start this video, he doesn't actually teach you any understanding. He gives, He teaches you a method. So he goes through this. Uh, and if you want to listen a little bit, 5 is equal to 10 times 4 plus 5. 10 goes into 45 four times with a remainder of 5. So the next step and all the remaining steps is we take the number that's in this position and we move it to where this number was on the left hand side. And then we take our remainder and we move it to where this number was. And we just. So as you can see, his basically explaining rote method he he himself doesn't understand why he's using that method it's highly unlikely because um if he did he would have explained the details behind it because it's so important to understand the method and uh you know most of the videos on this topic on youtube are actually very similar to this the the only thing they do is they explain method so for example, uh, from the first statement here, so let's go to the first statement, okay? So the first statement says 45 is equal to a divisor of 10. So why, why do we have, for example, 45 being measured by 10 and not 10 being measured by 45? So why don't we write 10 is equal to 45 times Q plus R? Any, any thoughts on that? Well, if you had to do that, you can be certain <laughs> that 45 is not going to measure 10 exactly. Only a certain part of 45 will measure 10, all right? So you already got a problem. Therefore, the first thing one notices is that when you're taking the GCD of any two numbers, you're measuring, you're measuring the larger with the smaller, very important. Okay, you're measuring the larger with the smaller. Now, being a Greek, I can tell you that in the original elements of Euclid, the word measure is mentioned over 240 times. Okay, it, it's, it's not, and the word divides in Greek means measures. Okay, it's the same thing. Yes, there is a separate word for the operation, which is diaresis, okay, but the word uh, metro means measure, and that word metrisis is found in the elements hundreds of times, okay? So very important first statement is that you're measuring the larger with the smaller. And so what he does is he goes through the entire process, but it's very hard from this process for a student to understand why five is the largest, why this five is the largest common divisor of these two numbers. Well, from the very fact that Q, the quotient Q, takes out every possible factor of 10 from 45, okay? It takes out all four of them and leaves a remainder of five, which means that whatever measures this how, however, it, which means this, if this remainder measures this divisor, then we're done, right? If it doesn't, then we repeat, repeat the process. But it, it doesn't, in this case, 5 measures 10 exactly, and there's no remainder. In his second example, it's quite a, a longer series of steps. So what one needs to notice is that um, when you get to the end, you realize that this is the greatest common divisor because 
it's the greatest common divisor between these two because that's what was assumed here and that's what was assumed here and all the way down, okay? So as you filter back up again, you'll know that this here has to be the greatest common divisor. And again, we measure the larger with the smaller and we always start with a larger number, okay? So now most videos go along this particular path, explaining rote method, okay? And that's basically what most of them done. Now, to my surprise, <laughs> as I was scrolling down here, uh, there's a video here by Michael Penn, who I think is a bit of an idiot, but his, his is probably the most pertinent out of all of them, okay? And the reason is that he attempts to prove it. But of course, the proof doesn't say anything about the me about measure. He, he, he strictly avoids using the word measure. But it's very important to use the word measure. And let me explain to you why you should use the word measure. All right, so let me expand this. Now, the algorithm, the Euclidean algorithm, is about measure, okay? And this article link here will tell you all about it. So if we say A is equal to BQ plus R1, it means that BQ plus R1 measures A, okay? What does that mean? Let's go back here again. So I've talked about this in the past. Let's just get a new, a new sheet. So if we say 5 is equal to 3 plus 2, what this means is that 3 and 2 measure 5 exactly. So if you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like that, oops, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? equal parts, then we know that we need 3 plus another 2 to measure 5 exactly, okay? And that's why we say 3 plus 2 measures 5, right? So going back to this video, using the word divides doesn't capture the profound understanding, even though division means complete measure in this exact sense. So proof, if there is a remainder, R1, then we try to measure the divisor B with R1. And if R1 measure B, measures B, then we are done. And R1 must therefore be the greatest common divisor because we already tried the largest divisor B. And we make certain to use the whole of R and not a po partial div divisor of R, okay? Because if we use a partial divisor of R, it may measure R of R1, I'm sorry, it may measure R1, but not necessarily B. So that's why we use the whole of R1. And naturally, we can't try to measure B with anything greater than R1, say K, because then K will not measure R1. This is essentially the proof, okay? So that it hasn't been written entirely in symbols doesn't make it any less valid than the entire board that this poor fool filled up because he does it in two steps. He first shows that um, there is a, a remainder sequence, and then it goes on to show that uh, there is a greatest common divisor, which is kind of uh, overkill and hides the real meaning because not once does he mention the word measure. It's all divides, and he uses symbols which basically gloss over the meaning. So, for example, here, we can't say 3 divides 5 or 2 divides 5, okay? But this, this has a different meaning. This, this divides means exactly, okay? But we're not talking about exact measure in terms of holes here. We're talking about exact measure using any particular part, okay? So we measure 5 exactly with 3 and 2, but neither of these measure five as a whole exactly, all right? So when we write three divides five, um, that's not true because three leaves a remainder when it tries to measure five, okay? So when three tries to measure five, we get a remainder of two. Does that make sense to you? Okay, stop and think about these things for a while before you continue, it's important. So coming back to this, um, it's important to mention that 
one should in the beginning always use the smaller number as divisor because any larger number won't measure the smaller the won't measure the smaller number. So if you, for example, had to come along here and say, uh, let's use a number greater than R1 here for the second one, then it's it's not going to measure R1. It might measure B but it's not going to measure R1. And if you choose a number smaller than R1, it might measure R1, but it may not necessarily measure B, okay? So that's why we take the whole of R1 and we percolate downwards, and then eventually in the end we have the R sub N minus 1, which is the greatest common divisor, because this here divides Rn minus 2, okay? And then <clears throat> Rn minus 2 times Q plus Rn minus 1 measures R sub N minus 3. But having said that, we already know that Rn minus 1 is the greatest common divisor of Rn minus 1 and Rn minus 2. And so we filter up all the way right back to the beginning, reaching the conclusion that Rn minus 1 must also divide A, okay? Not just B, but A, because the, the, before we get to A, we find out that, that Rn minus 1 does divide B, and then in the, the last step, it divides A, okay? So that's the essence of the Euclidean algorithm. It's, it's not easy to explain because it's pretty complex in terms of words, and writing a, a long tedious prove out like this doesn't really help understanding it. It's, it's best to write something short like this. If there is if there's a remainder R1, then we try to measure the divisor B with R1, okay? And if R1 measures B, then we are done. And R1 must therefore be the greatest common divisor because we already tried the largest divisor B, right? And B is larger than R1 because R1 is a remainder. So we make certain to use the whole of R1 and not a partial divisor. So a partial divisor will be, would be any linear combination of R1. So in the previous example that we had seen in the other video, um, where he, I think he had something like 45 is equal to 10 times 4 plus 5, right? We had that. And coming back to this, um, we see that now, I've lost my track of thought. You see, it's it's very easy to lose your track of thought here. Uh, so we make certain to use the whole of R1 and not a partial divisor. Right, that's what I was thinking, and not a partial divisor. And why don't we use, what, what does a partial divisor mean in the next step? Okay, it means that you can't use any linear combination of 10, like let's say 9 plus 1 or 5 plus 1 or 5 plus 5, etc., uh, with with five, all right. You can't use a a partial. Um, I'm sorry, this is not right. Hang on a second, I got mixed up again. Uh, you, Ten becomes the dividend, so you can't use a partial divisor of five here. In other words, one plus four, or three plus two, or two plus two plus one, etc. It has to be the whole of five, all right. That's very important. So that's pretty much it. Um, most of the videos that you'll find on YouTube don't explain understanding. It's just rote method. And of course, the majority of mathematics professors have no clue why this works, including, I should say, Michael Penn, because all he's done is he he's applied the rules that he's learned in abstract algebra. And he says, he uses simple logic to say, well, if the, it divides this and that, then it must divide what we originally started out with. And of course, there's, there's no need to say something like the sequence ends and that R n minus 1 exists. We know it ends because naturally when you're measuring a number, you're going to get to a point where you've completed the measure. That's the essence of the Euclidean algorithm. It completes the measure, okay, from beginning to end. So I hope I've made that very clear to you, all you educators out there. And at least I've tried to make it as clear as possible. It's not easy. 
But if you read my article, and here's a brilliant article, which I have written on this entire topic, what you can do is, uh, and it's got brilliant examples, all with, all with text that I've checked over and over again, so as to make sure there's no mistake, with nice examples showing that if 4 is a common divisor of 4 and 8, then it will also divide 12, and it will also divide 20, okay? And therefore, 4 is the greatest common divisor of 20 and 12. So I show you these things. Then I do a, a full discussion with um, with Claude, which is the most advanced chatbot. And you'll find that even Claude uh, learns from me, okay? Claude, uh, which is pretty advanced, realizes that <laughs> what has been pre-programmed with is not everything it needs to be able to explain. So um, I'll put a link to this article and also to this particular web page, which I'm going to, which is on my article site. So I'm going to give you a link to this. What is this? What is this you may ask? This here is an index to all my videos and articles. So for example, if you want to search for something and you, you go there and you say, holy grail, uh, holy grail, like that. And it'll take you right to the link, okay? And then, of course, if you click on this, it'll take you to the to the article. So I'm going to give you a link to this, and I'll update it every time, every now and again, because obviously every time I write an article, it's going to be outdated. So I have to add that article. And the, the problem with this is that academia.edu doesn't allow links in PDFs, which is really a, a bummer because I could have easily just loaded up uploaded a, a PDF file to academia.edu. Now I can't do that. So, and this is the reason I have this index file. If you're not already a subscriber, become one. Click like, tell your friends about this, tell your teachers, your students. If you're teachers, tell your students about this site um, because I do know better than you and you'll learn a lot more from me than you'll learn from anyone else. And that is a, a guaranteed fact. It's not delusion or anything like that. Follow me on academia.edu. Until next time, I'm John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. Goodbye.